Traveling to Jupiter sounds like the ultimate adventure. Crossing the solar system, reaching the largest planet of all, diving into its colorful clouds, and maybe landing somewhere on that gaseous colossus. But in real life, this idea runs into two enemies that do not negotiate with human technology. It is because of these two factors that, in practice, a human trip to Jupiter is, today, impossible. Jupiter is a gas giant, with more than 11 times Earth's diameter and over 300 times its mass. It spins very fast, has a colossal magnetic field, and is wrapped in a true radiation hellscape. At the same time, it does not have a solid surface, like a rocky planet. What we see of those beautiful colored bands are only the upper layers of a deep, dense, and turbulent atmosphere. Beneath them, the pressure rises to such absurd levels that everything we know is crushed, heated, dissolved. If the distance already makes the mission difficult, Jupiter's environment turns the project into a death sentence. The first major obstacle is radiation. Earth has radiation belts, the famous Van Allen belts. They are dangerous, but manageable with current technologies. Jupiter, on the other hand, has a magnetic field about 20,000 times stronger than Earth's, creating radiation belts so powerful that even the sturdiest probes struggle to survive a few years in its neighborhood. Around the planet, charged particles, electrons, protons, and accelerated ions create an environment where the radiation dose can be thousands of times higher than what is safe for the human body. To get an idea, a person on the International Space Station receives a higher radiation dose than on Earth's surface, yet still within what can be controlled with shielding and time limits. Near Jupiter, that same person would be bombarded by so many energetic particles that, in a few hours, they would be receiving doses equivalent to several CT scans per minute. In a short time, internal organs would begin to fail, the nervous system would be affected, and DNA damage would be catastrophic. We are not talking about cancer risk over decades, but about acute radiation syndrome within hours or days. Machines do not escape either. Probes like Juno, for example, were designed with heavy shielding, radiation-hardened electronics, and carefully calculated trajectories to minimize exposure. Even so, instruments deteriorate over time. Circuits can fail, sensors stop responding, components age quickly. Now imagine not only protecting equipment, but an entire crew. It would be necessary to build a spacecraft with shielding equivalent to a true space bunker, thick enough to reduce radiation to safe levels for months or years. There is, however, a huge price for that, mass. The more shielding, the heavier the vehicle. The heavier the vehicle, the more propellant is required to accelerate it, brake it, and maneuver it. This makes the mission progressively impractical with the rockets we have today, and with any realistic variant of traditional chemical technology. At a certain point, the project stops being merely difficult and becomes unfeasible. The shielding required to make radiation bearable would turn the spacecraft into something almost impossible to launch, accelerate, and capture into Jupiter's orbit. And the problem does not end upon arrival at the planet. Even if a super-shielded craft manages to enter Jupiter's neighborhood, any attempt to get too close to the deeper layers of the atmosphere would brutally increase exposure. The deeper into the magnetosphere, the more intense the radiation. The capsule would need, at the same time, to withstand this bombardment and face a second villain, atmospheric pressure. At Earth's surface, we are used to living under a pressure of approximately one bar, or one atmosphere. When someone dives into the ocean, every 10 meters of depth adds roughly one atmosphere of pressure. On the floors of the deepest oceanic trenches, such as the Mariana Trench, the pressure reaches something around a thousand atmospheres. That is already enough to instantly crush any submarine not engineered with extreme care. Now try to extrapolate that to a giant gas planet, where the atmosphere does not end after a few kilometers, but plunges tens of thousands of kilometers deep. In Jupiter, in the upper cloud layers, the pressure might even be close to Earth's. 
If someone could float there, theoretically, pressure would not be the main problem. But as soon as you start descending, everything changes. Intense gravity compresses the gases, and pressure climbs quickly. At certain depths, it surpasses the hundreds, then thousands, then millions of atmospheres. Solid materials like iron and steel stop behaving as we know them. Structures deform, are crushed, heat up, melt. There is no spacecraft, capsule, or spacesuit capable of directly withstanding that kind of environment. And pressure does not act alone. As you sink into Jupiter's atmosphere, temperature also skyrockets. The rising pressure compresses and heats the gases, turning the planet's interior into an exotic mixture where hydrogen and helium are no longer just gases. At extreme depths, hydrogen can become a dense fluid, or even metallic, a state of matter we do not experience under normal conditions. Any vehicle attempting to get near those regions would be crushed, melted, and destroyed long before reaching any kind of ground. And here is another crucial point. Jupiter, by all indications, does not have an accessible solid surface like Earth, Mars, or even some icy moons. What you have is a gradual transition from gas to super dense fluid with no clear line where one could say, here is the floor. Therefore, there is no safe place to land. The best comparison is to imagine a bottomless ocean where the water becomes increasingly dense and hot until it turns into something totally different, incompatible with any structure built by humans. A hypothetical capsule entering Jupiter would begin by crossing the upper clouds, facing violent winds, gigantic storms, and colossal lightning discharges. Soon after, pressure and temperature would climb relentlessly. Instruments would melt, hulls would deform, seals would rupture, life support systems would fail. All of this while radiation from above kept bombarding the structure. The craft would not even have time to sink very far before being destroyed by a set of forces we simply do not face on any other planet in the solar system. If it is already difficult to keep electronics working continuously in this environment, protecting a human organism is almost unthinkable. The human body was not made to withstand pressures much higher than what we find at Earth's surface. In extreme environments, such as hyperbaric chambers or research submarines, the entire system is carefully engineered to isolate people from the outside. On Jupiter, pressure would rise so fast and so high that any minimal hull failure would be fatal in a fraction of a second. There is no room for error. And even if someone argues that, in the future, we could develop super-resistant materials, futuristic alloys, or force fields capable of enduring such brutality, radiation would still be a gigantic problem. It is a cruel combination. The place where pressure is slightly less aggressive is precisely where radiation is most intense. Deeper down, where radiation might be a bit lower, pressure and temperature are so extreme that no known material stays intact for long. It is like trying to design a vehicle that is, at the same time, a submarine for the Mariana Trench, a nuclear reactor in meltdown, and a craft capable of flying through a lightning bolt. That is why space agencies treat Jupiter with respect and distance. The goal of missions is not to visit the planet with humans, but to study its structures, its magnetic fields, its moons, and its influence on the solar system always using robotic probes. Even so, those probes need very well calculated trajectories to avoid the deadliest radiation regions, and some of them are designed already knowing they will have a limited lifespan before being destroyed by the environment. When we say that a trip to Jupiter is impossible for humans, we are not saying we will never be able to reach the planet's vicinity. In theory, a crewed spacecraft could enter orbit around Jupiter on a very careful trajectory, perhaps staying in relatively safer radiation regions, away from the most intense belts. But visiting Jupiter in the sense of descending into its deep layers, exploring its atmosphere up close, or landing on some kind of surface, is completely outside the physical reality we know today. 
The future of Jupiter exploration, therefore, is robotic and indirect. Instead of sending people to be destroyed by the planet, it makes far more sense to send probes and orbiters to study the environment from a distance, and to focus our human efforts on friendlier places, such as the icy moons around Jupiter. Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, for example, may harbor subsurface oceans and even conditions potentially favorable to microbial life. There, yes, it makes sense to imagine, in the distant future, automated bases or even human missions, always with great care regarding the radiation that comes from Jupiter itself. In the end, the gas giant works almost like a cosmic reminder of the limits physics imposes. It is not enough to want it, to have courage, or a spirit of adventure. There are places in the universe that simply were not made for us, at least not in bodies of flesh and bone. Jupiter is one of those places, a colossus of gas, radiation, and pressure that we can admire from afar, study with our instruments, and use as a natural laboratory to understand giant planets around other stars. But for us, as human beings, it remains, and will probably continue to remain, out of reach. And there may be something fascinating about that. Knowing there are worlds so extreme that not even the boldest technology can make them habitable makes us see with new eyes how rare Earth's calm and balanced environment is. While Jupiter shows the brutal side of physics, our planet offers the delicate combination that made life possible. A trip to Jupiter may be impossible for humans, but it is precisely that impossibility that reminds us how much we need to take care of the only place where so far we know we can truly live. If this video helped you see Jupiter with new eyes, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you do not miss the next documentaries about the universe. Leave your like and comment below which other planet or extreme space topic you want to see here. This helps the channel keep bringing this kind of content to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.